Sarah and Jost here again with another segment, and what a gorgeous summer it's been in San Francisco. What better way to celebrate summer than with your favorite coaster dog and your favorite hot dog topping? What's your favorite hot dog topping, Jost? Well, Sarah, I'm a really big fermentation fan, so I'd have to say sauerkraut. Well, today you're in luck, Jost. With us today is David Gardella, our urban agricultural specialist here at JCCSF. And David's going to show us one of the best tailgate snacks and toppings for hot dogs, sauerkraut. David, take it. All right, so there's a few different ingredients that we can use in our salt fermented sauerkraut. We have some green and purple uh, cabbage that we're going to use, one of our main kind of sauerkraut ingredients. Some carrots, some radishes, a little bit of celery. These little guys right here are some fresh nasturtium seeds uh, that add a really nice kind of peppery sharpness to our, our sauerkraut flavor. And then just a few additional herbs that we have. We have a little bit of sage, some regular ground pepper, some dried thyme, and our salt, which is gonna be one of our key ingredients in our uh, fermentation today. We're basically just gonna do three steps. We're gonna shred, we're gonna chop, and we're gonna squeeze. And luckily I have Joe and Sarah here to help me with that. All right, for step one on our sauerkraut, we're gonna shred a bunch of cabbage. So we're basically gonna cut the cabbage head in half and then take a food grater and shred it into a large mixing bowl. And sticking with shredding for now, we're gonna shred some of our carrots as well, just right into our mixing bowl and mix them in with the cabbage. All right, after shredding our cabbage and our carrots, we're gonna mix it up a little bit and we're gonna chop our radishes, our celery, and our nasturtium seeds to kind of break up the texture and have some big pieces and some small pieces. And that's gonna help our overall sauerkraut mix. And after shredding all of our shredding ingredients, chopping all of our chopping ingredients, we're gonna pour our salt in and we're gonna squeeze all of our vegetables together. And the salt is basically gonna draw out all the water for our vegetables so we can push them underneath the brine. Then once our vegetables are nice and moist, we're gonna take all of that kraut and we're gonna put it in a jar, either a mason jar or even a crock pot if you have a little bit more space. So after we've put all of our vegetables in our container, we wanna add a weight on top of those vegetables. So you could use a rock, you can use another plate, or you can use a Ziploc bag that's filled with water just to weigh our vegetables underneath the water line. And then after we're done weighing our sauerkraut down with our weight, uh, what I typically do is I'll put a coffee filter, some people put a muslin cloth, just on top of the jar or the crock pot. Just to let it breathe a little bit and then you can smell the process as it's coming along. So you've put all your ingredients together and now all you have to do is wait. I typically wait about 10 to 14 days for my sauerkraut to be ready, but something that you can do is every day or so you can just go in and have a little taste and see how the flavor is developing. And whenever it's ready to your liking, you're ready to eat it. Thank you so much, David. For all of you out there, if you would like to learn some more uh, pickling techniques and fermenting techniques, David Gardella is gonna be teaching some wonderful classes this fall with our Urban Garden program. Um, since we don't have a couple weeks to wait for this kraut to ferment, David was kind enough to bring an awesome jar from home for us to try. So you guys ready to taste test? You bet. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Chow down. All right, take me out to the ballpark. David? Thank you. Oh my God. I can't wait to get my mouth around one of these dogs. 